guys, for this video I actually wanted to show you a breakdown of how I use layers in Photoshop. Now when my image is first scanned in, it is a background image, but I usually take that drawing and I break it down into its own um, multiply layer, or I separate it out so it's got just the black from the inks and just the white on another layer as a background layer. This actually makes the coloring a little safer, so I don't actually mess with my inks unless I really want to. And for this image, I actually broke down my layers so that I had two separate inking layers, one for just the squirrel and the other for the comic books that are flying up in the background, because I wanted the comic books to actually be a slightly lighter color than the regular black inks. This way, the squirrel would really pop forward and the comic books would kind of fade into the background. The next thing I did was I created two separate layers, one for the background color and the other for the squirrel's color. And I filled these with only a flat color so that I could use them as a selection area for every time I wanted to color only in those areas. I started creating new layers to color the squirrel. This allowed me to start trying out new color schemes without messing with the base selection area that I created with that first flat layer. Here's the color scheme I ended up going with. This color scheme actually took a couple tries, and I still have the other tries on a separate set of layers, which I've labeled invisible. I've gotten into the habit of keeping old layers like this just so that I have them to look at for later reference. Or I might want to try out different color schemes with different characters. Both the brown and gray and the brown and orange versions did work, but I really did like the one I went with in the end a lot better. Since I was happy with the color scheme, I decided to move on and create a new layer just for the gray tones. Turning off the other layers and creating a brand new layer just for the gray tones allowed me to figure out where the gray tones really were working and where they weren't, without getting distracted by the color scheme I had created. Now I make sure that that gray tone layer is actually on top of the colors layers that I created so that when I flip it to multiply it actually changes the shading of the flat tones I created earlier. Finally all this needs is a little bit of highlights so I created a new layer for the highlights. For highlights layer I usually take the layer type and switch it over from normal to overlay so it takes on a little bit of the color of the color layers below them. Now with the squirrel done I decided to start working on the background. This meant a new layer for the gradient and a new layer for the flats of all the comic books. This layer actually allowed me to select only the comic books so that I could shade them in a new layer. Now this is almost done but the squirrel doesn't really pop forward as much as I really wanted it to, so I decided to add another separate set of layers to really help the squirrel pop forward. One layer was just this outline around the squirrel in white, and the last was just a soft glow that was underneath that layer. That's it! Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed the inking session, and I hope that the layers explanation gives you a little bit of insight into how to use Photoshop. If you like my time-lapse videos, you should really go check out my new Patreon rewards over at patreon.com forward slash Chris Wharton. I've got some cool time-lapse commissions actually available, starting as low as $20. And if you like my art and you want to buy an original or a print, I've actually just started a new online store over at Store Envy. Go to chriswharton.storeenvy.com and you can check out what I've got for sale. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe and share this around with your friends. Have a great one. Thank you.